This lesson is on footnotes, endnotes, um, bookmarks, and find and replace. We're going to start with footnotes. Uh, when you're quoting somebody or a book, newspaper, magazine, you have to give credit to where you got that information. Now, depending on what you're working on, the, the layout and the information is going to uh, change. So rather than get into a, a lesson on how to create uh, a proper footnote or a note, I'm just going to show you how. So I've gone to, so I've typed my document, of course. I want to make it, make it pretty rules, right? Type everything in first and then worry about this after. So a, a footnote goes at the end of the page where the quote has occurred, whereas an end note goes at the end of the document. Again, uh, you would determine which of the two you're going to use. If you want a footnote, you start by putting your insertion point next to, okay, uh, the quote. So you can put it before or after, again, depending um, what the, what's, what's called for. So if I want to quote, uh, if I'm giving credit here, I could put my insertion point there and then I go insert footnote. Now, as soon as I click this button, it automatically puts a little reference mark up there. Okay, I'm going to scroll and roll so you can see that a little bit better. It's a small number one because it's the first one. Okay, so it's just a little number one. And then it created a little section here above your footer, but below your text area. It's going to put that line in for you. And this is where you type in the information. So you'd have maybe the book name, and then the author, and then the date, etc., etc. And as you type, it'll, it'll scroll up. It'll create more room as you need it. Now, when you're, if you had another footnote on the same page, don't make this mistake. Don't hit enter and expect to get a number two the way you would with a bullet. That's not the way it works. Once you're done this one and you had another one on the same page, you have to click back into the main section and insert another footnote. And that will give you a little two up here, a reference mark here, and that will allow you to type the new book name, author, etc., etc. Okay, so entry will not give you number two. You need to insert your insertion, put your insertion point where you want your next quote to go f to come from. Now, uh, just a little thing on endnotes. If I want an endnote now, I need to find where I want my endnote. Uh, I'm going to undo just so that you see that it will go to the last page. So now I'm on the first page, and if I wanted this to, instead of going on the bottom of the first page, if I wanted to go at the end of my document, I simply go insert endnote, and it's brought me right to the very end of my document. So it created the same little number one up here, right? But it brought me down here, and now I can put my book name, my author, and date, and whatever else is required. So those are your footnotes and your endnotes. And I can put another one here, let's say. And I'm just going to pretend that I'm typing. So now I have two endnotes. Um, next, a bookmark. If you have a real long document, this is not a good example with several subheadings. You can make it easy to navigate, okay? Or if you have a special section that you like to get back to, you can bookmark it the same way you would a regular book. Well, not the same way, but the same idea. So I would select the text that I perhaps want bookmarked. And uh, I don't know that I can get it from this table or this, this menu. So I'm going to go back to insert here. And it's right here underneath hyperlink. So I can go insert bookmark and I can give this a name. Now we used bookmarks when we were creating hyperlinks earlier. Um, so it's the same idea. So here I can call this whatever I'd want. I'd want to make it logical. Don't use spaces though. It may not accept it if you use a space. It may or it may not. So I, I like to not leave spaces. And now I can add that. So now that's a bookmark. So let's say this is 100 pages long and I want to find that bookmark. The fastest and easiest way I can think of is you hit the little browse button here. And by hitting the little browse button, you can ask to go to bookmark and your list now right now I've only got one so it's not much of a list but you can have hundreds of bookmarks here and you would just scroll through the list and say yeah that's the one I'm looking for go to that and it'll automatically highlight that bookmark so that was using your browse button the last feature I want to talk about in this lesson is called find and replace now to be honest uh, I don't use this very often but when you need it it's 
awesome. Uh, I, I've seen training manuals where the people wanted one word, like the word guest. They wanted it changed so that it was bold and underlined. Well, you can go through a 500 page training manual and look for each guest and that could be just a painful procedure. Or you can simply ask for find and replace. I'm going to go back to my home tab here and find and replace is right there. I actually find myself using this in Excel more than I do in Word. It's also available in Excel where you're working on a budget or some kind of project and you have the same number coming up every week. Uh, let's say it's your um, it's the amount of money you're taking home, your paycheck, and if say you you get a raise, well you can find the the amount you're getting now and replace it with the new amount, and you can replace it for the next two three years if you wanted to, depending on how big your spreadsheet is, and it will do all that. So find and replace, very powerful. You don't use it every day, but whenever you need it, it's awesome. So here I can say find. I'm going to say find Mac, and because I selected it, it found it. It said okay, so found Mac, and now I want to replace. So here I'm going to type Michigan Now careful when you have this menu uh it'll typically come up like this just like that so it'll look for every every Mac and it'll replace with this okay this more menu allows you to match case if you wanted to. So here it's going to search down, okay? Or I could say search all, which is typically what I'd like to do. Search everything and look for Mac. If I only wanted the Macs that were spelled exactly like this with that case, I would say match case. So you've got an awful lot of different ways that you can search for something in a document. So here I'm going to leave it match case because I only want the capital letter uh, max to be selected and then I want it to replace with this and typically you want to replace every occurrence so here I'm going to say you can go find next and replace one at a time okay so how you choose to use this menu is up to you but understand that you can find anything and replace with anything so here I can hit replace all and it's telling me that it found three and it made three replacements and then I can close this and, and I'll see that it made three replacements. Other things that you can use this for, I found it very handy. Oftentimes, one of my students will create a piece of work where they hit enter twice everywhere, or they've hit space bar twice after every word. You can go into this special menu here, and you can say find anywhere where they hit um, paragraph mark twice. Right, so you can go paragraph mark, paragraph mark, and replace with one paragraph mark. So you can do that. Lots of different things you can fix. Once you open a document and you see with your show hide what kind of mess you've inherited, you may be able to fix a recurring problem by using your find and replace. It's going to take some knowledge and some practice, but you'd be surprised that you can fix that way.